normally when you're solving problems involving heat, you're going to use one of two simple models, either the rapid change model or the equilibrium model. Neither actually ever apply perfectly in the real world, but they're useful approximations, useful simple models that are usually good enough for your purpose. Now the rapid change model is when things are heating up or cooling down quite quickly, whereas the equilibrium model is when everything's at uh, constant temperature. For the rapid change model, you normally work out the net heat coming in and then use specific heat capacity to work out the change in temperature. Whereas for equilibrium, you just you don't use specific heat capacity at all. You just write down the heat uh, transfer equation for heat in and the heat transfer equation for heat out and set them equal. So what's an example? Um, one example would be taking a pot full of water and boiling it. In this case, you'd look at how much heat was coming in and you'd work out the heat capacity of the water and use the equation for heat capacity to work out how rapidly it heats up. Another example might be someone swimming on a very cold day. Now they're going to be losing heat so fast that there's no way, no matter how hard they exercise, that they can keep their body warm. So the temperature of their body is going to be falling. The only question is how long can it f they stay in the water before they're dead? Typically only a few minutes in freezing water. So once again in this case you'd work out how much heat is being lost from the parts of their body underwater and compare that to the heat capacity of all their body and work, that would work out how rapidly the temperature drops and you can therefore calculate how long they can survive. Yet another example would be a supernova. Let's say a type 1a supernova, you get a thermonuclear reaction of a carbon oxygen white dwarf star which liberates huge amounts of energy very rapidly and then causes a blast wave that can be seen clear across the universe. Once again you can look at things changing very fast. You can work out how much energy is released by the nuclear reaction and that will go into the heat specific heat capacity of all the gas and you can work out how hot the gas gets and then you can do some gas physics to work out how rapidly it expands because of all that heat. So those are examples of rapid change models. Generally speaking this means you're putting a lot of heat in and things are changing in terms of the temperature. It's usually quick rapid response. Equilibrium on the other hand happens on longer time scales typically. One example will be a nice planet like our own. What's the climate of the planet? Well, it's got a sun somewhere nearby and light from the sun hits it. If that was all that happened, the energy from the sun would cause it to get warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer until it evaporated. But luckily, the planet is also radiating energy in the infrared. And so if you want to work out how hot the planet is going to be on average, you'd set them equal. You'd write down an equation for how much sunlight energy hits the planet. You'd work out an equation for how much infrared energy comes out. Set them equal, and if you solve that, you work out what the temperature of the planet is. Now, of course, that's not quite accurate. You might get changes in both, like the planet might come a bit close to the sun heat up, or there might be seasons, or something like that. But this will give you a good estimate of the average temperature of a planet. Another example might be heat flow through an oven door. Let's say you've got your oven and inside you've got some, it's, it's electric oven, so it's got some heating element powered with a thermostat and you've got your potato bake cooking in here. Now some heat is going to be leaking out. Generally speaking ovens have well insulated walls and fronts but not perfectly insulated. So if you want to work out how much energy you're going to have to pump in to keep the oven going, what you can simply do is work out how much energy is coming out of the heating element and how much is leaking out. And because it's on a thermostat and the inside is staying at the constant temperature, the two must be equal. So you set heat loss, in this case it'll be through conduction through the sides, maybe a bit of radiation if there's a glass pane, will equal radiant heat coming into your oven. A third example might be a car driving down the freeway. Very bad drawing of a car. It's 
driving along at say 100 kilometers an hour. Now in this case the petrol is going from the tank into the engine and is being exploded in the engine and about uh, a third of the energy goes into driving the car forward and the rest goes into heat. So there's lots of heat being pumped in but you've also got cooling of some description, let's say a radiator with cold air coming in and dragging the heat away. Because you're driving to Sydney, let's say, the two will balance. The heat in must balance the heat out. If the heat in was bigger, the car would get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter until eventually it melted or exploded. If the heat out was cooler, your car would freeze and stop, stop working. So that would be an equilibrium situation. So once again you write down the equations, heat in, so by how much petrol, what fraction goes into heat, heat out, which might be something to do with uh, uh, forced convection of air through the radiator. So those are the two simple cases. But of course the real world often has combinations of them both. What very often happens is that you start off a situation with one thing happening and then another one takes over. For example, let's say we had our pot full of water on the stove. Now to begin with the temperature is going to go up. You can just work out the heat in uh, compared to the specific heat capacity and work out how rapidly the temperature rises. But as the water gets hotter you're going to get more and more evaporation from the surface. So the heat out is going to increase. Now if you had a very small fire the temperature might rise but never actually reach boiling point because at some point the amount of heat escaping is equal to the heat in. But let's say you had a really big fire underneath it, so eventually it'll start boiling and you can then put heat in to latent heat to work out how long it's going to take to boil dry and then eventually it's going to boil dry. And then you've got all that heat just going into say a aluminium fry pan, which is going to get hotter and hotter and hotter. Of course you don't want to do this, generally speaking, if your pot is boiled, you should not let your pot boil dry when cooking. But if you did, and of course it happens all the time, how hot would it get? Now if we stuck with our simple rapid change model, we would say it get infinitely hot. The temperature would just steadily rise, you've got the heat in. But in practice, our aluminium pot or iron pot is going to be radiating infrared radiation. There's going to be convection coming off the side. And there's going to be some conduction maybe down wherever supporting it. And all those things increase as the temperature gets higher whereas the heat in doesn't. So the heat in remains constant, but as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, the heat out will rise, till eventually they're going to come into, come into balance. You only hope it does so before the uh, everything catches fire or burns down. Similarly for a planet near the star. If the planet is too cold, then there'll be more sunlight coming in than infrared radiation going out. Because there's net more heat going in than out, the temperature will be rising. As it rises, the amount of incoming sunlight won't change, but the amount of outgoing infrared radiation will increase, and increase, and increase, until eventually the planet reaches the equilibrium temperature where heat in equals heat out. So a very common situation is to begin with, when you first put heat in or take heat out, you're on this rapid change environment, but as the temperature gets hotter or colder, eventually you'll come into equilibrium, heat out will balance each heat in. So a lot of solving these things relies on trying to work out which regime you're in. If you're in a middle regime where things are changing but the temperature is also changing, then you can't normally solve it purely by writing down equations. You'll have to write a computer program or solve a differential equation. And we'll come to that later in the course.